Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to St Michael and All Angels Hinton Admiral for this service for Bransgore, Thorny Hill and Hinton Admiral. Uh, you're very welcome to join us today. The Bible says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. God is absolutely pure, absolutely holy, absolutely just and his ways are perfect. And we sing of that with our first hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs> said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second commandment is like it. You should love your neighbour as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. Upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let's have a moment of quiet to call to mind the ways in which we have not loved God with all our heart, soul, mind or strength or our neighbours as ourselves. And if you'd like to uh, bring that to God, perhaps join with me in a moment, praying the words which will appear on your screen. Do join with me as we pray these words together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> My colleagues, from the Book of Common Prayer, did you know that today uh, is what we call Stir Up 
uh, Sunday. Uh, tradition is, is that this is the day when you mix together all of your Christmas cake ingredients and the clue is in, uh, is in the prayer that is allotted to this day, which begins with the words, uh, stir up. There's a bit of uh, English tradition uh, for you. So if you haven't done it yet, um, start making your Christmas cake uh, today. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in just a moment, we're going to have a uh, reading from the Bible, uh, the penultimate part of our series in 1 John. That's going to be read for us by uh, Alex, and after that, there'll be a talk from, from me, another hymn, and uh, a time of prayer led for us today by, by Ollie. But before we do that, we're going to sing about the Lord Jesus. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. <laughs> A reading from 1 John chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Faith in the Son of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater, because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder, when were you last in a fight and how did it go? I'm not talking about a, a play fight or anything like that, a real fight. When were you last in one of those and how did it go? Uh, the last one I was in was a long time ago. In fact, before I became a Christian and I was age uh, 16, um, as teenagers um, do or, or, or perhaps did back back then, I, I've been out with my with my friends, I was talking to somebody and the conversation got, got a bit intense and all of a sudden uh, this head came flying towards me as I was head butted uh, in the face. I fell down on the floor and couldn't quite believe what had just what had just uh, what had just happened. I wasn't in the practice really of getting in, into fights, um, and I sort of expected some kind of apology or something like that. When it wasn't uh, forthcoming, I saw red and I somehow managed to get the chap into a headlock before we were uh, both separated by by our friends who who'd gathered round. And um, that was the last time I was in a fight uh, for real. But you know, life is a bit of a battle isn't it? So many aspects of day-to-day -day life feel like uh, a real a real struggle that require all of our uh, energy at staying positive at this difficult time of global pandemic, keeping ourselves well, keeping ourselves uh, fit, maybe even keeping ourselves employed. Uh, keeping ourselves safe from, from despair can be a real battle. Choosing to do the, the right thing when the temptation to do what is easy or what is wrong or self-indulgent is so powerful. And the question that John from 1 John, second to last part of our series, looking at that letter uh, from the New Testament part of the Bible, uh, what that wants to tell us today is how we can be victorious, how we can overcome in the struggle that is our lives in this world. How can we be Victorious. How can I be victorious in all of those struggles? Well, John answers that question for us. And uh, before we get there, though, he answers uh, another question uh, for us. It's a question that has come up a couple of times uh, already in the letter. Here's the first question, and in a minute I'll tell you how you can be victorious. Question number one is: What does loving God look like? It's very easy to say, isn't it, that um, that we love God, that we're religious or we're we're spiritual, whatever. What does that actually look like if it's real? What does loving God uh, look like? Well, John says this. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. What does loving God look like? Do you think you love God, well, John wants to say that loving God is not something we do if we choose to ignore his commands. If we don't read the Bible uh, or go to a church where it is taught or listen to it for, our, for ourselves, uh, then we're not loving God. Because loving God is about obeying his commands and we need to hear them uh, before we can obey them. Loving God isn't the same as loving God sin. John has said this time and time again, if we love to do what is wrong and have no desire to turn away from the injustice um, in our own lives, then we don't love God. And loving God is not the same as hating others. We can't say that we, we love God, says John, if we nurse a grudge against somebody else. And to do so is to disobey the commands of God. Loving God looks like obeying his commands. So we can't say that we love God if knowing God is all about just sitting out on a hillside and meditating or going on nice walks in the forest. Or if we uh, say we love God but hate somebody else or are indifferent to the injustice in our own lives and in the world around us. We can't say that we love God. We can't say we love God if we ignore his word. But if we love God, we obey him. We hear his word and we do it. Uh, Jesus says, anyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. When we love God, we obey his commands and we hear those commands when we open up the Bible together. That's what it means to love God. That's the first question. Our next question. How can I be victorious? How can I 
overcome the problems that I face uh, in life? How can I face those things bravely? Uh, imagine this, it's 2,000 years ago, and the mightiest army that has ever, ever existed is walking through the forests of Lower Saxony in Germany. And um, a chap comes out, he's, um, he's half naked uh, from the waist up, and he's got a sort of loincloth around him. He's got no armour, he's got sort of loose sandals on his feet, and he's got a little sword. And he comes running out of the woods, down the hill, and charges into that army. Is that bravery, or is it uh, stupidity? The year is 9 AD, and the woods are called the Teutoburg forest. The chap who's come running out of the trees knows something which none of the Roman soldiers know. What he knows is that the woods are filled with an alliance of German tribes who've gathered together to see off the invader. He knows that the battle will turn out his way and that he is right to be brave because victory is on its way. The key to victory, says John, the key to overcoming in the struggles of life is faith. Oh, this, is what, uh, this is what he says. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. That means they are victorious. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Now the idea of faith is really popular in our society, isn't it? Uh, we often say, well, you, you can do anything if you just believe. But the faith that John talks about here isn't faith in yourself. It's not self-belief. That can be rather deceptive, can't it? Have you ever met someone who thinks they're a great singer when in fact they're completely uh, tone deaf? No one's ever had the bravery to tell them actually they really can't uh, can't sing and so they just keep on just keep on singing it's very easy to be uh, deceived that is having faith in ourselves it's not always reliable but having faith in Jesus Christ the ultimate victor the one who says in John's gospel don't be afraid in this world you may have trouble but I have overcome the world he says to his followers I have been victorious over everything that is against God everything that is hostile to his ways of goodness and justice. Jesus has defeated those things by dying in our place upon the cross, so that there's no condemnation, there's no alienation from God for those who trust in Jesus, as broken and sinful as they may be. The key to victory, says Jesus, is faith. John says here, it's about trusting that Jesus is the son of God, that Jesus is the ultimate authority, uh, that hidden in the trees, uh, if you like uh, a metaphor, is an army far stronger than the one that is in front of us. The bigger picture of faith in Jesus Christ is that God has, has won and that we're on his side. And so as we face down the challenges of, of day to day life, we should know that even if we find those things really very difficult, they won't have the last laugh. They won't be victorious over us because God has already won the battle. And even if the struggles of, of this life really get us down, uh, even if we end up losing work, uh, losing sleep, losing health, ultimately God promises us a future which is guaranteed to us by Jesus Christ, where there's no more sickness, no more suffering, no more death, no more injustice. That is the victory. And faith gives us the eyes to see it. Not faith in ourselves, but faith in the ultimate victor, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen.
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what we read in 1 John, that everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Thank you that you've given us eternal life in your Son. We praise you for your mercy and grace, including us in Jesus' work on the cross. And we thank you for that. Father God, we pray for those who don't know that eternal life. We pray that they would hear of you. Father God, I pray that you would use us to tell other people about Jesus, that they may come to know you and have that eternal life too. We pray particularly for the Christianity Explored course, for the people who um, attended that, that they would come to know you, they would know you more, and they would have eternal life in your son. And we pray for us um, when we feel uh, far from you, that we would hold on to that truth, that if we um, believe in Jesus, that we are uh, with you in eternal life. I pray that we would hold close to you, especially in this time of lockdown, when people can feel lonely and isolated. Um, we pray that we would, we would know you um, close to us, and we pray also that we would be um, looking out for those around us. We pray that you would use us um, to help others who feel lonely and isolated. We would give us wisdom, how to help them, how to comfort them, how we would be able to bless uh, one another. Pray for all those who are ill, that you would um, be with them, that you would heal them, and they would come to full recovery. Father God, we pray um, in this time of coronavirus that you would give great wisdom to our leaders, to local leaders, um, to national leaders, that you would give them wisdom beyond what is humanly possible, uh, to know the right paths to take, um, what strategies to take, and you pray that you give all of us as well understanding, um, that we would um, follow the guidelines in place uh, in a way that's not disruptive, in a way that shows love for our um, neighbours and I pray that you will um, bring this to an end soon Father God that you'll be working around the world to uh, reduce the impact of this virus uh, to people's health and to people's finances to finish let's join in the words of the Lord's Prayer Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, as we come towards the end of our service, it's time for just a few uh, notices. And the main notice I want to, to give is that we've more or less got there with sorting out our, our plan for Christmas. So uh, details of our Christmas services, I'm pleased to say, will be available on the website. They're too complicated uh, for me to reel off here, but perhaps in the next few weeks I'll, I'll do a little bit of that as particular events um, come up. Um, the big headline is that we're going to try and do things fairly normally uh, at St Michael's but on a smaller scale which means that events will have to be ticketed because we can't fit that many people in this beautiful little church and the same is true at All Saints so we'll have a, a carol service uh, but it'll be shorter and you won't be allowed to sing but there will be there'll be fantastic music for you to enjoy and all the usual usual things that we love uh, from this time of year so please do come along to that um, we'll also be having midnight communion here and uh, other things in, in brand school, including our, our big interactive nativity uh, event, COVID friendly. So we're not friendly to COVID, but friendly to us uh, with COVID. So please do come along uh, to that and details will be on there. And again, that'll uh, maybe need to be ticketed uh, too. But all the details will be on the website and we look forward to your participation in those. Remember that they, these things are not just... Um, for our enjoyment, if, if we are members of this church or regular attenders, um, they are for that a bit, but they really are to help us to reach out um, with the message of Jesus to others. Christmas is all about God stepping into this broken world to bring healing and redemption and offer 
offer life. This isn't a time for us to keep that message to ourselves. Never has been and it never will be. So let's make sure that we include other people in our Christmas celebrations and we invite other people to come along to our Christmas events and maybe even prioritise uh, them coming over us coming. There's a challenge for you. If you've never done so yet, please subscribe to our channel. You can do that by clicking the little red box that says subscribe and has a little play icon on it in the corner of your, your screen. You never miss an episode. And uh, do like this and share it on, on Facebook, another way of making sure that the message of Jesus Christ is, is shared amongst our friends and, and family and, and neighbours. Let's sing our final hymn now. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, how great thou art.
May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.